What about cremation? Hi, welcome to today's little lesson. We've got a really interesting question that one of our viewers has sent in, a question revolving around cremation. Of course, you know that when uh, the body dies and the spirit evacuates it, you gotta do something with that body. And historically, the most common thing to do, of course, is to bury it in the ground where, of course, it undergoes decay. But uh, in more recent uh, decades, another popular form of disposing of a dead body is through cremation. And a, a person's body is basically put into an incinerator. And in the aftermath of that, of course, uh, it goes up in smoke, but there are a little bit of ashes left over and uh, which are given to the relatives of the deceased. And then those ashes are kept as sort of a memorial. Or in some cases, the deceased uh, prior to the, their death has requested that their ashes be scattered in a certain place that has some significance to them. Um, and for various reasons, some people kind of feel like uh, they want to go back to their favorite spot. And although they're certainly not going to experience uh, anything in that favorite spot because it's just, it's just, you know, ashes, it's not the person. But uh, some people who have a kind of a, you know, a non-biblical uh, worldview might uh, somehow think that... Um, you know, in the circle of life, they're going back to their favorite place. But in, in, in any ways, let's talk about cremation for Christians. Well, I can't think of anything in the scripture that forbids the cremation of a, a Christian's body, although we know, again, historically, most common is the burial of a body. And of course, Christians envision that one day every dead body according to the promise of God, will be resurrected. The, the dead in Christ will rise first when Jesus descends from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and the blowing of the trumpet and so forth. And so for that reason, some believers have been persuaded that the only appropriate way to, to dispose of the, of the dead body is to respectfully bury it in anticipation of that great day of resurrection. And I Certainly have done my share over the years of graveside uh, services when we cite that very thing, because it's a very sad thing when they're lowering that casket into the ground. And uh, it certainly gives us hope to think of the day when the dead body contained in that casket is going to be re revitalized, renewed, rejuvenated, and somehow God's going to get that body out of there, usually in the pictures that and the cartoons, it's depicted as kind of a, you know, a, a, a bursting forth. All the earth bursts up and out comes the body. But yet, uh, that's a little bit speculative. So nothing in Scripture that forbids that. And I will submit for your consideration that um, it's no more difficult for God to resurrect a cremated body than it is difficult for God to resurrect a buried body, right? Because when you bury a body, of course, in in, in wealthier cultures, of course, the, the body is uh, filled with a chemical that slows down the decay process, uh, but still it eventually decays, right? And uh, depending on the, the burial vault and, and the casket and so forth, I, I realize that these are factors, but it just seems to me that anything you bury in the ground, given enough time, you know, there's not going to be much left of there that resembles a, a body. And this, particularly, we you know, that would be true if it wasn't for a burial vault, a, a monster casket, and whatever chemicals are injected in, in that body. But, but regardless, think of all the people, Christian people have been buried in the past without all of those preservatives, as it were, and, you know, put in a very simple casket or in a cloth or just buried just their body under the earth. And no doubt that after so much time passed, that body decomposes. And, you know, eventually, if you were to dig up that spot, you know, you wouldn't find much that 
resembles a body. <clears throat> Unless, of course, you know, it was, um, uh, you know, fossilized and so forth. But, uh, you know, I don't think that that's uh, the most likely scenario. So in any case, um, you know, let's just suppose that God, when he makes the, the resurrection bodies at the return of Christ, that he uses the same molecules. Well, if that body is decomposed and it's become basically just a part of the earth uh, eight foot under, uh, God could take the exact molecules, if that's what's necessary and required, in order to make a brand new body and to get it out of that grave somehow. You know, that's obviously we're talking about in the realm of ultra, ultra supernatural. And so if God can do that, it stands to reason that God could also gather up all the molecules uh, of smoke that have floated around the atmosphere and landed on florist, forest floors and on street corners and, and those ashes that are remaining and gather all those molecules up and, and recreate the, the resurrected body, right? And no big deal for the Lord. Nothing's impossible. If he, if he can number the hairs on our head, which he says he has, well, he can number the molecules that make up our body. It's kind of a cool thing, you know, scientific scientifically proven that you can't destroy matter, you can just change its form. So, uh, you know, the molecules that used to comprise every dead person's body at one point in time over the eons of history, you know, they're, they're, they're not in the body now, they're somewhere floating around or in the soil or, you know, whatever. Um, of course, there have been Christians that have been burnt at the stake, and of course, uh, they were cremated, obviously. Paul makes reference to that, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse number 3, talking about love, and he says, If I give all my possessions to feed the poor, and if I deliver my body to be burned. And again, it's a little bit vague as to specifically what he's referencing there, but nevertheless, Paul did reference the burning of a body for the sake of some cause, some noble cause. It could be for love, and it might not be for love, as that verse intimates. Nevertheless, there's no caution or warning or you know, prohibition of that thing, uh, such a thing spoken of in Scripture. Okay, the last thought. A cremation could be a, a better stewardship when you think about what it costs to, you know, get the burial vault, get the casket, go through the ceremony, blah, 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 the, the, the burial plot and so forth. Uh, it, it's a lot less expensive to be cremated. And so if you're thinking at it purely from a stewardship standpoint, that might be a factor. But I'm not telling you what to do. You have to decide for yourself, okay? Uh, the nice thing is, no matter what you do, if you believe in Jesus, you're going to live forever in a resurrected, glorified body that can never die, okay? Nice note to end on. Thanks for joining me.